Republican Senator Bill Cassidy of Louisiana was asked by Vice News why people need AR-style rifles. Here's his response. Do you think that there is any room to ban assault weapons in this country? Why does someone need an AR-15? Well, if you talk to the people that own it, uh, killing feral pigs in the, you know, whatever, the middle of Louisiana, they wonder, why would you take it away from me? I'm law-abiding. I've never done anything. I used to kill feral pigs. Uh, the action of a criminal deprives me of my right. Senator Bill Cassidy of Louisiana. Joining us now, former New York City Police Commissioner, now the executive chairman of Tenio Risk, Bill Bratton, former CIA officer and FBI special agent Tracy Walder, and contributor to the conservative website The Bulwark, and host of Not My Party on Snapchat, Tim Miller. Good morning to you all. Commissioner Bratton, I want to start with you as a seasoned veteran of many police departments who's run many police departments. Just your initial assessment of the approach, it appears, law enforcement took in Uvalde. We know now that at 1140, the gunman entered the school. It was at 1247 that the tactical team arrived and got in and finally was able to kill him. That's not to say, as we've said many times, there were not brave officers who confronted him initially, but were outgunned. But based on what you know, what's your assessment here? Well, a lot of what we're dealing with, Willie, as you know, is speculation at this stage because law enforcement in Texas has been an embarrassment in terms of the information they've been providing, uh, the misinformation they've been providing. I teach this in terms of communications in times of crises. And you always start off with the information as preliminary, subject to change. The information they've been putting out now two, three days after the event has been an embarrassment because there's so much misinformation. So we really don't know at this stage what happened in those first 12 minutes, that first hour. And what we do know is that there seems to have been a violation of the basic tenet of the active shooters, which is that you move to the shooter. No matter what, you move to the shooter to save lives. And officers around the country since Columbine now for 30 years have trained to do that. We're going to need to find out in the days and weeks ahead, did this department train for it? Did they, in fact, do it? I'm now reading news stories about some individual officers who effectively did do that in that school. What's also missing here, really, even four days into this event, is there's no schematic about this school. This is not one building. It is multiple buildings, multiple classrooms in multiple buildings. So they should be able to, at this stage to basically explain what does this building look like? Where were officers? Where was the shooter? The confusion. Everybody was killed in one classroom. We now find there may be as many as four classrooms this individual was roaming through. No, there's just so many unanswered questions, but at this stage of the game, they should be doing a much better job than they have been doing to try and explain what they do know. And it's, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. Commissioner, how do you explain? Uh, we know we just heard from Ken Delaney and there is a SWAT unit in Uvalde. We know they've taken new security measures, physical barriers, putting up fences, school resource officers, doubling their budget to keep all these schools safe. How do you explain the delay as you look at this timeline from 1140 to 1247? How do you explain that? Well, that's what the investigation that is un underway, I would assume. Uh, needs to be determining so that they can get information out to the public, to you and the media, to get to the public about what they know at this stage of the game. The doors and that is those classrooms. Do they lock from the inside to try and keep a shooter from coming in? Did that preclude their ability to uh, immediately get into these classrooms? We have no information as to what the inside of this school looked like in terms of what officers were dealing with trying to get into various classrooms. And so, again, uh, the news media conference that they're going to do this afternoon, hopefully they'll finally get their act together. Give us some schematics. Give us some timelines. I'm not very interested in terms of the 911 calls that came in in this 12-minute period of time. The initial shot uh, fired at the grandmother would bring a large police response in that small town to that location. The crash of the vehicle, the shots being fired outside at the two people outside the funeral home, the confusion. One of the things that clears that up is what were officers responding to? It sounds like they're responding to multiple shooting incidents in a very small town. There probably weren't more than 10 or 12 officers working on a shift in that city at that time. We don't have that information. So we're going to have to wait till more information becomes available. But at the moment, they're doing a terrible job of trying to basically control this situation. Hopefully, they may get their act together later today with the news conference that's now scheduled for later today. 
Tracy, good morning. Thanks for being here. It's Jonathan Lemire. I want to draw upon your experience as a former FBI agent, also a teacher. Uh, there are a number of Republican senators who seem to want to talk about anything other than the issue at hand, guns. And a quick, ta a, a, a immediate talking point seems to be school safety to harden the schools, although we've seen in some moments where people, someone there with a gun, is overmatched. That's what happened in Buffalo anyway. Uh, but also this idea of a single point of entry, just one way in, one way out, thinking that would be easier to safeguard. But aren't there actually all, an extraordinary amount of dangers to that proposal? Yes, that's incredibly dangerous. Um, as a teacher myself, a, a former FBI agent, I mean, part of why I am no longer a law enforcement officer is that as a law enforcement officer, you have an ethical obligation to engage a target and to proceed to where violence is occurring and try to stop it. And I wasn't willing to do that any longer. And, you know, as a teacher, if you have one egress point out of a school, you are dealing with, if it's at a high school, you could potentially have 1,200 kids trying to enter and exit from the same point. And we have to remember, you know, I'm here in Texas. We have tornado drills. We had a tornado not far from me. Um, in California, they have earthquakes. That We have fires that occurs in chemistry labs. And if you have one exit point to this school, this can be a, a complete disaster and students really could be burned alive inside of a school. Tracy, um, we know that there are these uh, talks going on, preliminary uh, bipartisan talks going on in the Senate. We have no idea whether they'll lead to anything or to anything that could be meaningful. But if you had the ear of Democratic leadership at the moment, what would you advise them to be doing? You know, I think we need to put limits on these sales of these long guns, particularly here in Texas. I think that they are incredibly easy to get. I think that, you know, you can really create a maximum amount of damage in a very, very, very short period of time. And we are just not equipped to deal with this. Schools should not be these, these hardened fortresses, basically, that they have become. This is not what educators signed up to do. And I, I really would like to tell lawmakers that we need to be putting limits on these things and they shouldn't be this readily available. Tim, there are a couple of pieces of legislation uh, sitting in the House that passed through the House on background checks, expanding those that have not been taken up by the Senate. Chuck Schumer trying to get that going. Uh, there is this bipartisan group having a conversation now for whatever that is worth. We heard Joe Manchin say again yesterday, this time feels different. We noted that he said the same thing after Parkland and similar sentiments after Sandy Hook. But as you think about this, what is the way forward? Is there anything achievable here in trying to prevent elementary school kids from being killed in their classrooms? Yeah, hey, Willie. First, the first thing is I think speed is important. You know, look, we've seen this both on shootings. This is dark, obviously. We saw it with uh, the second Trump impeachment, right? Like, if these guys go on a vacation, if weeks pass, uh, momentum for this uh, stuff fails. Excuses pile up. So I, I think the Chuck Schumer in the S Senate should bring up the background check bill. Uh, but the two uh, uh, tangible things that could respond to uh, the, the shooting in Buffalo and the shooting in Uvalde that I think that they should bring up are, are the two changes that Republicans in Florida made after the Parkland shooting. Rick Scott, mm -hmm. who is in the Senate right now, was governor of Florida, and he signed a law. That, that, that would put in these red flag laws, uh, uh, which are kind of these restraining orders for people who are a danger to themselves or others, that, that family members or police could go to the courts to get, to get weapons removed from them. Uh, and the second one is when the Garrett Hake was talking to the Cong Republican congressman about changing the age to purchase a weapon from 18 to 21. Uh, it is insane that you can buy two assault rifles online in the state of Texas but you cannot buy a glass of wine at dinner. Uh, nobody is, could be for that in a genuine principled matter.